today we're going to practice Tai Chi. We're going to practice in a different kind of way. I'm going to challenge your brain because we're going to do different things today. Remember in the email that I sent out this morning, there, there was a study that talked about the six elements possibly of what, how Tai Chi can positively impact cognitive function. And it talked about it being a moderate aerobic exercise, which is really good for your body and that oxygen uptake. It talked about training agility and mobility. It talked about learning new skills and patterns of movement. It also talked about sustained attentional focus and having to really memorize new things talked about multitasking. It talked about how the meditative effect of Tai Chi and that uh, subsequent reduction in stress is good for your cognitive function. And it also talked about how time spent in a leisure activity, in a social activity, is actually really good to delay cognitive decline. So it's good that we're together, even though it's by video, this is good for your brain. And today we're going to really key in on that learning new skills, because I'm going to put different movement patterns in front of you and challenge you. You're going to feel a little awkward, but that's okay. Check your ego at the door, have some fun, laugh at yourself, and We'll go into the weekend with a smile on our face. So this time, instead of stepping up to the mirror, I'm going to actually step back because we're going to move in a, a longer pattern. So if you have a little bit of extra space, that's good. I want you to first come into your pushing chi. And we're not going to forget the 10 essentials. We're not going to put aside the principles. But we're going to focus on putting different patterns together. So as you do your pushing chi here, I want you to feel that substantial and insubstantial, that water flowing gently from one leg into the next. And you're still keeping your columns intact, those shoulders above your hips. So now as you bring your weight forward, let that back leg become completely insubstantial and step forward. Do a regular pushing chi. And now bring all that weight forward onto that right leg. Let the left leg become empty and step forward. So you're combining your pushing chi with your chi walking. Really focus on that substantial and insubstantial change so that you're not stopping the flow of the movement and so that you're keeping those columns intact. You're moving from the Dantian and you're not pushing yourself forward. One more step. So combining pushing chi and chi walking is a great way to warm up your body. That wasn't too hard on your brain, right? So now we're going to combine part the wild horse's mane with wave hands like clouds. This one will be a little bit more challenging. Holding the ball to the right, I want you to step out, part the wild horse's mane. Now bring that right foot up. And Come into your wave hands like clouds, which brings you over to holding the ball to the left, and then step out, part the wild horse's mane. Step up that, step that left leg up, wave hands like clouds, brings you all the way into holding the ball over to the right again, 
Step out with part the wild horse's mane. Step up right. Wave hands. Holding the ball. Step out, part the wild horse's mane. Right into wave hands. One more. Part the wild horse's mane. Wave hands like clouds. Now we're going to do that one again, and I'll get you started. But then I'm going to be quiet for a little bit because I want your brain to have to remember what's next. What am I supposed to do next? So holding the ball to the right, step out, part the wild horse's mane, and then stepping into your wave hands like clouds. Then you're stepping out, part the wild horse's mane, into your wave hands like clouds. At this point, I'm going to let you practice. And if you get lost, just come back to holding the ball. One more. So remember that combination and practice that combination. It's not as easy as it might sound. It's not as relaxing until you actually feel what you're doing, right? Your brain has to connect. Oh, wait a minute, what am I doing next? The next combination is repulse the monkey with kick, smash, and box the ears. This one is not as hard as part the wild horse's mane with wave hands, but it's a good practice to make sure that you're understanding that substantial and insubstantial as well. So bring your weight to the right. We'll do kick, smash, and box the ears on the left. So kick, smash, lower that center of gravity, box the ears. Now your weight's forward on that left, then bring the weight back to the right. Let that left leg become empty, and you're going to do three repulse the monkey. There's two, and there's three. Now the weight's on the left. Leave it on the left, because now you're going to kick smash and box the ears on the right. Shift your weight back to the left, and now do three repulse the monkey. Now that weight's on the right, leave it on the right, kick, smash, and box the ears. Oops, I fell. <laughs> Let's try that one again. I'm going to get us started, and then I'm going to be quiet. So lifting, kick, smash, box the ears. Remember your substantial and insubstantial. So putting kick, smash, and box the ears with your repulse the monkey, you really have to focus on where is my weight, where am I going, in what's next. And if you have your weight in the wrong place, you can't complete the motion, right? So that's a good practice for your body and for your brain. Now this next one will be the next two combinations will be the hardest for your brain to hold on to. You're going to put brush knee together with pick the needle up from the sea bottom. 
So let's do this here. We'll start with our weight on the right, holding the ball. Step out left, brush knee. Now you step that right foot up, shift the weight to the right, tap your left toe, and pick the needle up from the C bottom. Come up block, fan through the back. The weight's on that left. Holding the ball to the left, step out, brush knee right. But now you have to pick the needle up from the C bottom with the opposite hand. So you're going to step that left foot up, bring the weight to the left, tap that right foot, it's now empty, and the left comes over to pick the needle up from the C bottom. Come up, block, and fan through the back. So let's do that one together a couple times and then I'll leave it, I'll be quiet again so your brain has to remember. Hold the ball to the right, step out, brush knee left. Step up, pick the needle up from the C bottom. Come up, block, fan through the back. Leave that weight on the left, brush knee right. Then you're stepping up, Tap the right toe, pick the needle up from the C bottom. Using that left hand, come up block and fan through the back. Right about now, your brain is going, what? And that's a good thing. You can feel the neurons firing. Your brain should be on fire right now. That's a good thing. Remember I said, check your ego at the door. If you feel a little clumsy right now, that's okay. Let's do the brush knee. Pick the needle up from the C bottom. I'll get us started, but then you have to do it on your own. Holding the ball, step out, brush knee. Pick the needle up from the C bottom. That's a fun one, but that does take a lot of practice. Not only are you putting two different movements, putting movements in a different pattern, but you're also doing something on the opposite side of your body. We're going to do the same thing with snake creeps, deflect, intercept, and punch. You're going to have to deflect, intercept, and punch on the opposite side of the body. So the first one is the easier one. We're going to start forming a bird's beak on the right, bringing the weight over to that right column. You're going to step out with the left, snake creeps. Turn, coming into your pheasant stance. Now tap that right foot. Your hands come to your left hip. Step out with the right, deflect, intercept, and punch. That one's not so bad. Now I want you to form a bird's beak on the left. Step out right, snake creeps, turn, pheasant stands. Now tap that right foot, excuse me, the left foot. Bring your hands over to your right hip, and now your left hand is in a fist. You step out, deflect, intercept, and punch. So let's do the first one. Forming that bird's beak, step out. Snake creeps, pheasant stands. Bring your hands to your left hip, step out, deflect, intercept, and punch. Now you're going to form a bird's beak on the left. Step out. Snake creeps, pheasant stands, Hands come to the right, step out, deflect, intercept, and punch. Let's do it again. Form that bird's beak on the right, step out, snake creeps, pheasant stands, 
Deflect, intercept, and punch. Now turn, form a bird's beak on the left. Snake creeps. Pheasant stands. Now that left hand is in a fist. Deflect, intercept, and punch. So putting different patterns together does make your brain go, whoa, what, am I have, what do I have to do here? You're building new neuromuscular connections. That's outstanding. You have your brain alive right now. If you were to try to learn something new, that's a good thing. That's what we want. That's why we send kids out to play on the playground and do different things. Then their brain is ready to absorb the learning when they come back into the classroom. I'm going to make you do a different form right now. You know all of the movements. There's a little bit of a different uh, lead in to one of the movements. And one of the movements is just on the opposite side of the body. But this is the first segment of the long form. So we usually do the short form. We're going to do the first segment of the long form now. So relax. We're going to just follow me. I'll cue you through all the movements, all the weight shifting. But you'll see how putting a different pattern together into a flow of a form is really good for your brain. So standing nice and tall, just like we normally do, take a nice deep breath in. Breathe it out, sinking down. And open. Preparation. It's not so hard yet, is it? Now we're going to hold the ball to the right, but our weight is going to be on the left. Then our weight comes to the right and we step forward into a left ward off. But we're not going to complete the sequence. Now hold the ball to the right, to the left, and step out completing the ward off sequence. Grasp the bird's tail. Roll back. Rotate and press. Pushing chi. Bringing your weight over to the left. Come back to the right, form a bird's beak, and single whip. Now the weight comes to the right, let the hands float down, then bring the weight back to the left, and tap that right foot. This is called lifting hands. It's exactly like play the guitar, it's just the opposite side. Now bring that right foot in and do your arm circles. Step out with the right, bring the weight to the right, and you're going to turn, quarter turn to the left, and come into your white crane spreads its wings. Continue with your arm circles. Now step out, brush knee left. Step up, play the guitar. Now brush knee left. Brush knee right. Brush knee left. Step up, play the guitar. Brush knee left again. Form a fist with that right hand. Rock back, bringing your hands to your left hip. Step out, deflect. Intercept and punch. Pushing chi. Now it looks like Return the Tiger to the Mountain. You're coming into an apparent close at this point because it's just the end of the first segment. And there are actually three segments in the long form. But isn't it fun to put different movements together in different patterns? It was interesting while I was preparing for this, I was practicing, and I did the sequence, which we're familiar with in our short form, brush knee left, brush knee right, brush knee left, and I started to go into repulse the monkey. 
And that was muscle memory taking over. That wasn't my brain being alert at that point. I wanted to do this because that's what we do in the short form. Whereas in the long form, you step up, play the guitar again. So it's good for you to keep that focus, to keep that uh, mental awareness so that you're staying sharp and so you're staying in the moment. Remember, the meditative part of Tai Chi is being in the moment and knowing, putting all the pieces together, that multitasking, that thought of where is my weight? Am I moving from my Dantian? Am I keeping my columns intact? How am I breathing? All of those things are wonderful for your brain.